One thing that can go in this plan is what's called a class diagram or a UML class diagram. And this shows all of the different objects in the game. I should say all of the different types of object, which is the different classes. We'll see an example in the next slide where we'll see that each class, for example, a customer here, has a name, customer. It has attributes, which are the variables that need to be stored for a customer. And it can have methods, the things that the class can do. These are functions. For example, a customer can verify password. Uh, an account has a withdrawal method. Class diagrams can be really detailed and show lots of really interesting information about how these things are related with arrows. Uh, right now, we're only concerned with the name, the list of attributes, and the list of methods. Let's have a look at an example for a game. You might recognize this game. It's called Super Jumpy Boy Jumps Over Mushrooms. What a classic. And we'll look at an example for a UML class diagram for this game. The two classes that I'll focus on for now are the player, which is this one, and the Goomba, which is this one. You would obviously need other classes here, like a mystery box, or a coin, or a whatever this is, a bricky square. But let's focus just on these two. The player needs, we need to store some information about the player. For example, we need to store its horizontal position, expos. You don't have to call it expos, call it exposition, horizontal position. I don't care, but we need to remember its horizontal position. We will also need to store its vertical position so we know where it is. Um, and maybe we might need to store whether it has the Super Mario power up. Um, and that would be not an integer, which is a number for the left and right position, but it would be a Boolean. It would be a true or a false. Either the player has the Super Mario power up or not. Can you see that I've listed the information we need to store as well as the type, the variable type, for example, an integer or a Boolean? There will be lots of other information to store as well, like maybe its horizontal speed and its vertical speed, whether it's jumping or not, but I'm just keeping this diagram simple. As well as the attributes, which are the variables, we also have the methods, and the methods are the things that a player can do. You could have player.jump, and it will make the player jump. Player.move left, and it will move the player left. Um, in Python Arcade, the way that we're making games, you'll normally have a drawer that says how to draw the player. Whenever you run this function, this method, uh, it'll draw the player. And another one called update that normally runs, let's say, 60 times per second um, that updates the position of the player. And we've got similar things for a Goomba. A Goomba might have an extra method to check if it's actually collided with the player. For example. And remember, this is just a plan, this game design document. It's quite likely that your final game will be different to your initial plan. This is okay and this is expected. Totally normal. Let's have a look at how this one here would translate into code. There we go. So I've got the UML diagram on the left. I've got a little reminder about what these things mean. The name up there, the attributes, which are the variables, and the methods, which are the functions, the things that it can do. And let's have a look what that would look like in actual code. In Python, using the arcade library, it might look like this. A player is a certain type of sprite in arcade. When you create a player, when you initialize a player, you need to tell it the X position and the Y position and save these for later. And is Super Mario Whenever you make a player, it'll just always be false. So you can just set that automatically to false. You can see that the three variables match the three self.variable names here. So xpos, ypos, and is Super Mario are the three attributes because you can do self.that thing. The methods down here will match functions in Python. Functions look like def 
and then space the name of that function. So in this section would go all the code that needs to run whenever the player jumps. So if the player presses that space button, you need to do all, run all of this code in here. This is just an example. The thing that I'm looking at for your planning is more the diagram up here, the planning, so that before you start, you have an idea about what things you need to store. Another way to help illustrate um, how a game works, we've got a way to illustrate the classes in the, in the game, the things we need to store, which are the types of different objects, a type or a class called player, a class called Goomba, a class called, you know, mystery question mark box, 